Welcome to Wayne County Connection. I'm your host, Michael Swigert. As our regular viewers know, we are so much about promoting Wayne County as a great place to work, live, and play that that's the whole focus of our program, connecting your viewers with our guests and the agencies that they represent that are doing their part to make Wayne County a great place to work, live, and play. And we also encourage you to do your part to get connected as well, and there are many ways that you can do that. Of course, visiting our website at waynet.org slash cc is the best way to get connected. That's where you can find information about today's program and the guests that we have today, but also information about past programs if you've missed something or you think about someone that you wanted to get connected with before and you just haven't had a chance to yet, visit our website to find out more information about that. Also, we'll have links to our on-demand and streaming pages for viewing this program or sharing this program with people who don't get it on television during the regular broadcast times. We are streaming uh, multiple times per month and on-demand so for viewers out of the area or who don't have cable television. And we want you to spread the word as well because the more people that know, the more people that are connected and get involved the better we can make Wayne County. We can build on our past, promote our present, and secure our future for ourselves and for our children. Speaking of children and securing for ourselves, one of the things that we're, has been in the news a lot lately has been food and food scarcity. And Wayne County ranks very high in the food scarcity in the state of Indiana. And we have guests today to talk about that. We want to encourage you to do your part to get connected to help. And who you're going to get connected with are my guests today, Ted Chalk and Jay Barbary. And they are here to talk about Wayne County uh, food scarcity, the Wayne County Food Council. And may, you may not have heard about it yet, but the Richmond Community Orchard. So. We're going to talk about that today. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good to Thanks. be here. For those of our viewers that don't recognize you or don't know you, I'm going to ask you to tell us a little bit about yourself and, and how you're connected with Wayne County. And Ted, we'll start with you. Well, as you know, I'm the vice chair of the Wayne County Food Council. Other groups I'm, that I'm a part of, and this, I'm on the board of the Drug Free Wayne County Partnership, and uh, my job is, I'm the, or my mission, I guess, <laughs> is I'm pastor of First United Methodist Church in Richmond and Centerville United Methodist Church. All right, Ted. And then Jay. I, uh, I'm an associate professor here at IU East, but I'm also the founder of Woodblock Press, which is the organization that's involved with this particular orchard project. Okay. And uh, gentlemen, we have a lot to talk about today, and there's going to be a lot of information. I'm sure that our viewers are going to have a lot of questions. The more I talk to you and the more I look into it, the more questions I have. So I'm going to ask at the beginning of the program, I don't normally do this, but how can people get connected to learn more? Ted, tell us about how people can connect with the Wayne County Food Council. Well, I think it's going to be on the screen, but uh, basically through our, uh, the Food Council's uh, Facebook page. Okay. And that way you can connect in ways to find the website and uh, we're always quick to answer any questions anyone may have. We really try to pride ourselves in that. Oh, so right. if that it would be the easiest way through social media to get in touch with, or you could attend some of our meetings, which you'll find uh, listed on the Facebook page. And you'll even find past recordings on the That's Facebook right. page of some of them. I, I watched one. There actually. you go. That's right. It we record as, all of our meetings now. It's awesome. It's great. And, and Jay? And also Facebook. Uh, you can find us by looking for Mary Scott Orchard. And there is uh, an email and also a phone number that's listed there if anyone ever wanted to uh, get in touch with me about this project. So the Wayne County Food Council um, sounds kind of interesting. I, I, I could think of a lot of things that might be involved with Food Council, but first I, I think about, you know, there are already food pantries, there are farmers markets, there are just in a lot of entities that are already involved, churches, uh, social um, groups that are involved, there's uh, just a whole bunch of things going on with supplying food or making food or free meals available or food pantries and what have you. And I wonder what is the Food Council and, and why does it even need to be here? So maybe you could start with that. What is the purpose or mission of the Wayne County Food Council? Well, really the purpose, the mission of the Wayne County Food Council is really to uh, collaborate and connect all those partnerships and all those different groups together so we can do a better job of finding ways that we can work together to uh, deal with the food scarcity issues that we find here in Wayne County. That's the original purpose of why it was founded. And, and we've mentioned it, you just mentioned it, and I mentioned a little bit earlier, food scarcity. And, and what does that mean for residents of Wayne County? Well, it means that I've, uh, I, I couldn't give you the exact uh, definition anymore, but uh, if you look at uh, the way the federal government describes it, it's, it's so many miles that people have uh, that they characterize as food deserts, where there's so much distance that people have where they can go to find healthy, nutritious food sources. Mm -hmm. And... It seems kind of odd that we'd be talking about 
a food desert or food scarcity in Wayne County, Indiana. I mean, we're in East Central Indiana. We're in the middle of, of several major metro areas. We have grocery stores, it seems like, uh, in several places throughout the area. Uh, we have a farmer's market that meets in downtown Richmond, and there are other farmer's markets out in the county. How much of a food desert do we really have? Well, quite a bit. When you th think about where those uh, grocery stores uh, and providers are located, there there are many places, even in this, within the city of Richmond, where you're going to have to go miles in order to. Now, you could find a, some sort of convenience store, but mm -hmm. are they providing the the healthy, uh, nutritious food sources? And especially then, the price is going to be more in, in those locations. So, the farmers market now during the summer. Uh, it's two times a week, and in the winter time there's just the Saturday market. But and once again, people have to be able have to be mobile. They have to be able to get there. They have to be able to um, take the the food back with them. So no matter how uh, no matter how many it seems to us who uh, like me. I don't live a mile from Myers. We don't even <laughs> shop regularly. We just, hey, oh, we're out of something, we'll run over to Myers. But for many people, they don't have that luxury. And right. I think that's the reason that there's the, we're dealing with the food scarcity. We're dealing with uh, uh, maybe some better education for uh, nutritious food sources. And it's the lack of mobility for some of the people in our area. So then maybe what characterizes a food desert is not necessarily only the availability of food, but how easy it is to get to exactly. that available source exactly. of food. And then once you get there, like you mentioned, convenience stores, uh, there are lots of places to go and buy some foods, mm -hmm. but we've learned more about processed foods, and, and it's, it's good in a pinch. It'll keep you from starving, but for long-term health benefits, more locally produced food and uh, fresher foods are better for our bodies to Exactly. Process or to, to use to, as nutrition. So you mentioned that. So what are some of the uh, that the food council in, it collaborates with different agencies, mm -hmm. and how does the food council conduct its business and collaborate and and, co and uh, enable or or encourage collaboration between the agencies that are trying to meet those needs? Well, we continue to reach out to find different uh, stakeholders that might be a part of the Food Council, but we are connected with uh, almost all, many of the food pantries, the major food pantries in the area, uh, Read Benefits, uh, Read Health, their mm -hmm. benefits, uh, they're, they've been amazing at helping us to collaborate. So we began by, uh, I guess, just by having quarterly meetings where mm -hmm. we, and they were at noon, and uh, we, one of the first steps we took was to, uh, to double those meetings and to begin to have those in the evening. And we found that we had more people to the table. Mm -hmm. And that's the first place that I think we met Jay, or one of the first <laughs> places we met Jay. Uh -huh. And um, so we could talk with people and bring them together. We've had different, uh, uh, we've been a part of different events. We try to uh, have a presence at, when we can through the food pantry. In fact, uh, Caleb Smith, who runs the, uh, um, the farmer's market mm -hmm. is on the, uh, the food council board. Okay. Uh, coming up, just a, an event that I'll, uh, I'll plug a little bit, on October 23rd, we're having a food summit okay. where we'll have some uh, uh, national speakers come in and talk. We'll have some local uh, speakers uh, there available, and there'll be some breakout sessions and try to include people and learn more about what's happening in Wayne County and how they can be a part of it. Okay, and information about that food summit's available through your Facebook page. Yes, and other if it's not there, it will be very soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. And then you mentioned Jay and how he, you got involved. And I asked before the program, so how did you two get connected and, and meet and so forth? Was it something that you were already involved with, or uh, did this, or, you know, which came first, the egg or the or the chicken, or, or in this case, the orchard or the food council? And uh, how did that all come to be? The first question that I have before we get to that, though, is really what are we talking about with the Mary Scott Orchard? I've been by Mary Scott Park, mm -hmm. and there's no orchard there. In fact, there are dying trees there. So yes. tell me what this is and, and where this came from, where this idea came from. Well, last year the Parks Department circulated a memo and it just went to various offices and I happened to see it. And they, were, they had a number of ideas for ways to increase uh, uh, the interaction of the populace with our public parks. Okay. And one of the things that caught my eye was a public orchard. And so I, uh, I asked a few people uh, on campus to make sure this was something that, you know, they would 
let me do because I do have a day job and everything. <laughs> but uh, I went to the Parks Department and I spoke with Denise Retz and over several conversations she sort of guided me to uh, Mary Scott Park as the ideal uh, location for this. The primary reason being it's located right on the edge of the Northwest Food Desert of Richmond. Uh, it is located right next to a, uh, an, inter an intermediate school as well. And you know this is just sort of an ideal location. Uh, in, in terms of you know the traffic and you know people come to use the park and things like that. But you're right, there's no orchard there. There's only a bunch <laughs> of dead ash stumps, and while those are pretty to sit on, you know they're just no, they're got to go. But there's uh, there's an area in Mary Scott that will look it will look roughly like a, a footprint almost okay. uh, that the orchard will take the shape of. And so there will be uh, varieties of dwarf apple trees. There will be blackberries, raspberry bushes, um, just a, a lot of stuff there. A lot of stuff. So part of the question is why an orchard and why in a public space? Well, well I'm, I'm a big believer in public spaces um, because, well, the reason I came, became aware of the Food Council was actually going through the farmer's market. There was a, a table that was set up. Mm -hmm. And so I'm thinking, okay, this, is, you know, this makes for a good connection here. But I think that you know, public spaces like that, they give people a chance to come together. And when you look at uh, the, the idea of, of what's behind the orchard, you know, uh, what's involved with bringing it into the, uh, putting it in the ground, which would involve uh, you know, students and service learning uh, with uh, free access throughout the growing season. This, uh, this, this is actually located pretty close to uh, public housing, just a couple blocks away, as well as being on the cusp of the food desert as well. And you know, there's, uh, there's just a lot of benefit that comes from it. And it's a very aesthetically pleasing space. So, so I know that we've had in, in the Richmond community in particular, but in Wayne County in general, we've had public gardens available mm -hmm. before. And some of those have been differently managed. Sometimes it's a, a space where uh, in, in a fairly public space, uh, an individual or a family has access to a small plot to make their own garden. And sometimes it's uh, multiple people working on a larger space together. Um, how will the orchard operate as a public garden? Well, it Technically, it real, I guess you wouldn't really want to call it a public garden because okay. no one will be coming in there to do any kind of maintenance or anything like that. Uh, Woodblock Press is the, the one that is going to own the maintenance for this orchard. The intention behind it is just to give uh, folks a, a place to come and pick an apple if they want or go and harvest some berries and they don't have to clean up uh, afterwards. So. That'll, to me, that kind of makes it a little bit more attractive because I love gardens, but I hate to weed. And so, you know, that, that's, that kind of goes, that thinking There's goes not a lot it. of weeding done in orchards, though. I mean, you got no. the tree and, it, yeah. No. Uh, so, so where did this idea of a public orchard originate? I mean, the first thing that came to my mind was Johnny, the story of Johnny Appleseed, you know, the, the man who went across planting, you know, <laughs> apples, trees everywhere, it seemed like. Yeah. Uh, having lived in Fort Wayne for a while, that was a big part of the, you know, <laughs> cultural history in Fort Wayne. Uh, so, uh, are you a modern day Johnny Appleseed? I mean, what? Jay. I'm, uh, yeah, no, I'm thinking not. I'll just stick with Jay. <laughs> but, uh, no, I, um, um, you know, when, I'm sorry, I completely forgot your question. <laughs> well, basically, where did the idea of the orchard come from? And, and uh, I mean, why an orchard okay. kind of thing? And, and why sorry for, Scott sorry Park? for the that's brain okay. lock. No, that's okay. <laughs> now, the, uh, well, when I, whenever I approached the parks department, one of the things Denise Retz made available was a uh, food report that the parks had, had uh, commissioned uh, through uh, one of their interns that, okay. that was from Earlham. And so, reviewing this and the data that was in it, I became aware that they have public orchards and public gardens like this in Muncie and Bloomington and you know why there why not here you know and so this idea that uh, the parks present such ample space in the community there there are just all kinds of things that you can do with them and this is repurposing it in a way that will make it sustainable and and hopefully just make it an attractive place to come mm -hmm. so. And it's, and it's going to be, I'm sorry, no. it's going to be great because, you know, the, the other part of this orchard is, you know, Mary Scott Park is, uh, has grass on the ground, right? right? And when you walk across it, it can be a little, you know, kind of wonky. Um, but the grass is going to be taken out of this area, and there's going to be agriculture-grade mulch put down, okay. which will level the ground out, and it will also make it easier for folks with mobility issues to be able to come in. And so if, if someone is in, on a, you know, some kind of an easy scooter or a wheelchair or what, mm -hmm. what have you, you know, they're not 
they're not uh, uh, precluded from being able to come up and, you know, interact, pick an apple, chill out and eat it. <laughs> so the apple trees that you're considering, this, this orchard, and you mentioned some other plants as well. I think you said blackberry. And raspberry, uh, and yeah. raspberry plants as well. Uh, those seem to me to have kind of a limited uh, harvest season. Mm -hmm. And so my, I guess what I'm thinking is, how will people know that they're ready to be harvested? Uh, what's gonna be the requirements for participating in that? And then for the other nine, 10 months of the year, how is the park gonna be used in, and what kind of accessibility will this orchard in particular have with the community? Well, the, the orchard will be open 365 days out of the year. The, uh, as, the, as the fruits come in, people are able to come up and just pick whatever they want. So, you know, whatever that, uh, that window of time is when a lot of the apples are ripe is, is uh, you know, people just have access to that. Now, when it comes to the harvesting of the fruits, mm -hmm. uh, because there is a particular window of time that that would occur in, uh, those, whatever is, are left on the trees will be pulled off so that, you know, it just doesn't go to waste. And, um, you know, we're, we're talking about ways to incorporate students into this uh, because of service learning uh, opportunities that they have. Uh, I've spoken with the director of Girls Inc. and asked if, you know, would you be interested in, you know, maybe participating in this, not in terms of the maintenance, because I'm not asking anyone to do that, but, you know, just as, as a point of impact in the community. And they were very interested in that. So it seems like everyone I've had a conversation with, they're, they're, this pr project has been able to branch out, no pun intended, <laughs> you know, even more. Uh, and, and I mean that from the design all the way down to the choice of the plants, to the way that the plants would be put in the ground. You know, I've, I've gone and talked to folks here in Richmond, uh, Rose City Nursery, uh, Wessler uh, Orchards, mm -hmm. the Purdue Extension Office, you know, everyone has been uh, willing to contribute uh, their, their insights into this. And as a result, I've learned a lot along the way. And so, you know, when, this, when the orchard goes in, it's really gonna be something to see. So you just said something that's critical. When the orchard goes in, mm -hmm. where are we in this process? You said right now, as we are recording today in the in the fall of 2019, that we've got stumps in that park. So mm -hmm. what's the process? Where is this uh, orchard project in process right now? Uh, right now, we are in the campaign fundraising uh, portion of it. Okay. The installation date is set for the fall of 2020. Okay. So right now, from now until October 14th, we're going to be uh, raising funds for this through uh, patronicity.com, which is an online kind of a Kickstarter uh, uh, type of, of platform. Mm -hmm. But they work with communities in order to, you know, put parks in or, or just sort of improve their overall conditions. I've seen a few of the ads that you've gotten some local kind of known people or connected people yeah. to, to do. And teachers. I really like the I teachers. Went to the, I went to the teachers first, <laughs> yes. And I love the tagline, you know, it's uh, how do you like them apples? Yeah, how about them apples? Yeah. <laughs> how about them apples? It's, it's uh, kind of interesting. But you did mention teachers. You've mentioned that, uh, and for those people that don't know, Mary Scott Park is next to a middle school mm -hmm. so that there are, are, are there going to be educate? You mentioned some educational opportunities. Are there going to be specific? Oh, absolutely, programs? absolutely. The okay. uh, the idea behind going and uh, installing the orchard in the fall of 2020 will be uh, there will be teachers from the high school. Rob Bailey is one okay. uh, that is going. They're going to bring their students over, and uh, their students will be able to act as sort of you know mentors working with the middle school students. And so you know, there uh, the idea is that the kids are going to do the planning. You know, my, my belief is that a space like this is something that's very important, but it doesn't have the same kind of value if someone just comes and puts it in the ground for you. And so the idea here is that through service learning and other opportunities, kids will be involved in the planning of it. Uh, there, are, uh, there are teachers, the science faculty over at Dennis Middle School, they were the uh, folks that I talked to, mm -hmm. as well as the, the principal and assistant principal over there. One of the teachers who, uh, his name's Adam Scott, he's an instructional coach, he's actually writing a curriculum for this so that whenever the orchard is in the ground, uh, it, will be, it will constitute an outdoor classroom space, uh, but people will be able to go out and learn about food production, they'll be able to learn about ecology, you know, uh, people can take their English classes out there and, you know, <laughs> muse and write poetry or just, you know, whatever it is that they do. But it's still very much uh, integral into the way that education is going to work. Because honestly, if it wasn't that way, I probably would not have pursued this. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, 
lots of things may go in the ground and they just kind of wither away, but I wanted this to be something that people will be involved with and it will assume its own identity, so to speak, you know, with uh, being next to Dennis and whatnot. All right. Well, that sounds very interesting. You mentioned again that there are uh, you're currently in, in September and early October of 2019 involved in a fundraising mm -hmm. uh, portion to get the initial um, seed money, as it were, uh, completed so that you can get the, the orchard in the ground. What kind of ongoing um, maintenance and upkeep costs are going to be um, associated with this orchard? I mean, but one of the questions that a lot of viewers will, will have and, and will hit me up with on the street is, well, why are we spending tax money, taxpayer money on our orchard? Uh, but you mentioned earlier that this is woodblock uh, press mm -hmm. is, is kind of spearheading this project, but it's in a public space and it's connected with the schools. So uh, how does that all work? Well, the way, uh, the, the way the orchard will be maintained, because it's within the city limits, you're, you cannot go and use commercial grade pesticides or anything like that. So what we're going to be doing is utilizing organic uh, materials to go and maintain uh, the orchard. Uh, the, the maintenance, uh, as it goes through the course of the summertime, like I said, that will be primarily a woodblock press uh, venture. Uh, the Parks Department has agreed to lease this space to us free of charge. Uh, they've also agreed to run a water line out there so that uh, a drip irrigation system will be installed. As the, as the orchard matures, it will probably not need as much water uh, and the, just the annual rainfall patterns will sustain it, but this will be important, especially in the beginning. Right. And so, you know, the, it's, it's conceived of to be uh, uh, something that is relatively low maintenance. That's the other reason for putting the mulch in, you know, so you don't have to mow grass and things like that. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And are there going to be uh, like physical structures? You, you mentioned English class going outside, and I thought of you know people and teachers going outside and students and, and sitting on benches mm -hmm. or you know having shelter from the sun and so forth. Are those part of the plan as well? Yes, yes. Okay. And actually, I went to another teacher and asked about the <laughs> benches. Uh, a retired uh, fine arts teacher from Test, Randy Stoley, has uh, designed the benches that are going to go into the park. Now, the thing about these benches is, you know, it's not just a nice place to sit, but it's also a uh, sort of a platform for education as well. And so uh, we're incorporating art displays into the benches. So, you know, we have, we have a problem with education when it comes to pollinators. People think bees are their enemy. Okay. And so another part of this that's embedded in the orchard will be um, uh, pollinator education. So we'll have uh, art displays that students will do uh, that will talk about, you know, different species of bees, uh, moths even. Well, I didn't even know a moth was a pollinator until a few weeks ago. <laughs> but, you know, it, but it'll be things like that. So you're like learning that. things in this project I am learning well. so much, yeah. <laughs> I am learning so much. <laughs> That seems interesting. One of the uh, it just popped into my mind. Are apples one of your favorite foods, Jay? I just, Actually, uh, they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wondered they are. if that might have any impact on the, your your desire to pursue this project. It's uh, it's a great thing. I I I think actually, uh, and I may have mentioned on the program before. My viewers may have heard me say this um, as we've talked about food in Wayne County previously with other guests um, when we had Caleb on the show and so forth. One of the saddest commercials I've ever seen is the one um, talking about food and it's the apples and bananas song, you know, why, why can't I have apples and bananas? And uh, I, I think about that every time I, I get a banana or anything, that, that there are people in within walking distance of where I live that may be struggling with um, being able to have fresh fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. and so forth. And this is one small but important way that we can address that shortage in our community yeah. and get involved. And many of our viewers may or may not have ever experienced that issue with a, a bare cupboard, um, but somebody that we know has. I heard some statistics that more than one in five children in Wayne County struggles with hunger on a daily basis and, mm -hmm. and we had a guest on a couple of years ago that talked about ways that they were addressing that with school children in particular. What other ways can viewers get involved either with the Orchard Project or with the Wayne County Food Council to find ways that they can either receive assistance or help be involved in, in addressing the problem? Well, I think for the Wayne County Food Council, um, the first contact, as we've talked about, would be the uh, the Facebook page. But we do have these meetings that, uh, and 
all of the groups are there. Uh, the, there are numerous food pantries that are there, people like, uh, and groups like Jay, who's coming with the, the idea of the orchard. We've had people from Earlham, we've had different schools. Uh, the Richmond uh, school system, they have representatives there. So one of the great ways, and checking it out, the videos, as you mentioned, but is to, so you can hear, every, we feature someone at every, uh, at every meeting, mm -hmm. plus you can hear what everybody says, and we try to find ways that we can let each other know what each group is doing, but also ways that we can connect and work together. That's one of the things that really attracted me to the Food Council um, early on, is that many, most of the people that are involved are really seeking ways that we can collaborate and work together to take care of some of the issues that we have here in the area. And I didn't see a lot of that at first, but uh, being a part of the Food Council has really opened my eyes to how uh, well, people really want to work together. It's just finding those connections, and I think that is the one of the greatest resources for the Wayne County Food Council. Is we want to be there to connect people, to support people, to help them uh, fulfill their mission, like Jay has, so uh, so they can so they can do a better job together uh, for Wayne County. A lot of our focus has been on things that are happening in Richmond, the food pantries, and so forth. Are there? food pantries or resources for people who live outside of the Richmond area, like in, in some of our outlying communities, um, food pantries or other resources that people can access if they are in need of food help or to provide their assistance? Yeah, there are, but there are a few food pantries and others. Uh, at Centerville United Methodist Church, we have a food ministry day on the third Saturday. There are food uh, pantries in Hagerstown. There's a food pantry still in Cambridge City. Uh, but and some of them, they have uh, farmer's markets close by in those areas, too. But uh, yes, the situation is harder uh, to uh, find resources once you get outside of uh, Richmond. I have about 70 more questions that just came to mind, but we are out of time. Ted Chalk, who is the vice chair of Wayne County Food Council, and Jay Barbary, uh, heading the Wayne County, or the, the, I'm sorry, Mary Scott Orchard, project. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming on our show today. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Look us up on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Look them up on Facebook. And thank you for watching. I want to encourage you to do your part to make Wayne County a great place to work, live, and play. Visit our website, waynenet.org slash cc, for links to these gentlemen and other ways that you can get involved. I'm Michael Swigert, your host. On behalf of our producer, Jane Holman, and all the staff here at Whitewater Community Television, thanks for watching. We'll see you next month.